I will eat a 15 minute warm up in the forest. We have a guy here, we will be filming it. So uh, try to look serious and uh, fast, but uh, do not run fast. Just uh, look, okay. look cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Jens on the reflection of the Norway weekend. This is Nan McCarthy with my reflections on the squad training weekend in Norway. For me, Norway was a great weekend. For me, the weekend was all about sharpening up my old technique on high quality maps and courses. After a reasonably good winter and spring in terms of physical training, but haven't had a huge amount of good technical orienteering. One of the best aspects of the weekend uh, for me and what I thought worked really well was that we had a mix of slower paced orienteering at the start and then we kept the faster and head to head racing towards the end. This really helped you push on when you're late or tired. Uh, I actually won't be able to go for walk selection this year due to a clash with another race. Uh, but I have many other orienteering races coming up, such as the European Uni Orienteering Championships and the World Cup races as well, so I've no doubt this weekend has had a, has had a really good impact and uh, has helped me prepare really well for these other races. I never ran in Norway before, so I actually didn't have much of an expectation when I went to Norway for the first time. It was a great opportunity to get as much training in as possible in in really relevant forest for the world champs obviously we got something like 80 kilometers of tough orienteering in norwegian forest done in three and a half days so it was a massive volume and when you combine that with just the, the mental side of it that we did just talking about and looking through routes it was a really high quality weekend of orienteering i just came to see It was incredibly challenging and it was incredibly physical as well and it was a real eye-opener. Stop here or make some last changes. And uh, the start is 100 meters from here. Uh, I will not have a map at the whole time. And uh, there is four maps. the part that were really most beneficial is the high speed orienteering the orienteering intervals and the race pace sessions when you're really trying to push yourself as hard as you can in unfamiliar terrain and trying to get as much information from the map in as little time wasted on the map reading as well as possible and that's that's the real challenge i think and um, that's the part I love, just, just trying to nail down the Every time after we had our training done, we also had a quick reflection on what went well and what didn't go too well and without, within those conversations. I found out very quickly that I was the only one um, that was severely challenged on that first night, which uh, was a bit of a relief to be honest. Josh, huh? the only man brave enough to get out of the car. It's grim. 
It is very green. So uh, just just uh, arrived in here with the ends. Got to strap the ankle after IOC. Got my under wrap. Got my actual strapping. Uh, so just really just prevent um, just delaying going out because it's horrible. But we'll uh, we'll get going soon enough once I have this strapped up and we have a chat and get the maps and all the rest of it. So, uh, looking forward to the weekend. I'm running out of things to say here. <laughs> um, but yeah, looking forward to the weekend. First training session. Should be, uh, should be good. Oh, yes. All right, it's a new role all of a sudden. What's going on here? Looks very professional anyway, the role. Ah, yeah, sure. I do my best. Just having a good group of guys that was it, that were training hard together and pushing each other through the different trainings it was great and made a huge difference, certainly to me. And by the end of the weekend, the the improvements that I found I made and, and the others around me, not just in the sense of how much understanding of the map we now had, like reading the contours and stuff, which was huge. That was a massive improvement but also just moving through the terrain comfortably with the map or without the map knowing where you place your foot when you spend that amount of time in forest or terrain like that you do get much more comfortable with it very quickly and i think that it's going to make a huge difference for the selection races and more importantly for the world champs and i think that the irish team have put themselves in a really good place to kick on and try and have a really good world championships this year after having a few probably slightly disappointing championships. And put a smile upon my face. Okay, let's go. I hooked up with Josh and uh, we did spend two and a half hours in the forest and um, really not taking, not taking a fast approach but really trying to get into the map, try to really orienteer, try to get a handle on the terrain, try to get a handle on the features, even some features on the map. Um, it was uh, extremely challenging but also very, very rewarding. Hopefully all the training that we put in this put in this weekend will stand to us and we'll see it in the results. Mentally and physically and for me personally it was important to understand the terrain 
understands myself within the terrain. How can I navigate through it without um, without losing too much speed? Quick thanks to everybody because it was a great weekend. Enjoyed lots of fun activities as well as tough but high quality training.